so I'm just a bit out of it at the moment. Um, this whole coronavirus bullshit is just gotten out of control uh, for our family. My in-laws, Fernando and Thelma, were actually are well. Fernando is still actually on that Diamond Princess cruise ship, uh, cruise of doom that's stuck in the harbor. I think in Yokohama. He's not even able to get off despite Australia sending a charter plane to pick them up. There's 15 Aussies, Australian citizens, still stuck on the cruise for whatever reason, not being cleared by the Ministry of Health in Japan, or I'm not sure what we're not, the family, we're not sure what's going on, but he hasn't been cleared yet. Um, my mother-in-law, Thelma, was already taken out to a hospital because she was suspected to have been sick and may potentially have coronavirus. And mistakenly, the Australian government sent uh, a letter to my wife's family saying that she tested positive for coronavirus and is being kept in a hospital in quarantine. And then the Japanese government counteracted that and said that that was misinformation and that she only has like a bronchitis or a chest infection or some kind of other, you know, typical illness, not the coronavirus. So we're just kind of like, what the heck's going on here? And then also now my father-in-law is just still stuck on the ship. He's been on, he was supposed to come home. Uh, they were supposed to come home February 5th. Uh, it's February 21st now in Australia or in Japan and this side of the world. Um, and we still don't know why he's still on the ship. He should, if two weeks quarantine, he was supposed to get off February 19th, which was my birthday. And he's still two days past on, locked on the ship where people are constantly getting sick. Uh, two other Australians were diagnosed yesterday. Uh, if you look at the statistics online, the cruise ship is the worst concentrated place for the coronavirus other than mainland China. And it's just insane that they're forcing people to just be stuck in this ship, breathing the same air, just tr essentially trapped in their rooms with only like an hour or so to go outside a day. That's like a maximum security prison, solitary confinement. I mean, he's all alone now in this room. And he just wants to be with his wife who's sick in the hospital in Yokohama. And he can't even do that. He couldn't even go home with the rest of the Australians uh, on Thursday or whatever it was. When the charter plane was going to fly them to Darwin to spend another two weeks in quarantine. Um, the situation's gotten just way out of hand. And we need to just get Fernando Casado, my father-in-law, out of this ship. Um, so we're just asking if you can send this video around to whoever has some power in politics or whatever. Just get this man off the ship. He's healthy. He wants to get off. He wants to just go to a hotel and just go to the hospital and be with his wife. He wants to come home to Australia. And on top of that, um, my family, uh, TJ and I and our, our two children, we had a, fam we had a family trip booked to Japan in March, which now we're being forced to cancel. And it's just terrible timing. Um, I haven't been in, to Japan in 20 years. My mom's Japanese, so I'm half Japanese, and all my Japanese family is still there, mostly in Fukuoka and Kyushu. And I thought it'd be great to book a trip and to finally go back, you know, essentially to my motherland and bring my children to see, you know, Part of their heritage and share that experience with them while my grandmother's still alive. Um, she is turning, I think, 84 this year, 85 this year. Um, you know, so I just wanted to see her as well. It's been, you know, two, two decades in the making to, to, go and, to go and see her and everybody else. It's been very hard to get out there. And my family there doesn't uh, travel at all or leave Japan. Um, so I've already paid for the tickets and there's nothing we can really do. Uh, the airlines, Philippine Airlines, by the way, is saying we can't really, you know, it's not, they're still flying to Tokyo. They haven't been told otherwise that it's not safe to fly to Tokyo. So we're kind of trapped in this situation where we've paid, you know, I've gotten a great deal through Budget Air. It was like under $1,500 uh, for the entire family, Australian, um, 1500 Australian dollars for the entire family to fly to Haneda Airport via Manila, um, which is which was a great deal. And now they're saying, you know, now I'm kind of thinking my wife definitely doesn't want to go to mainland Japan, which I, I definitely understand. We've got two small children. Uh, 
three years old and 10 months old, basically by the time we travel. And I totally understand we can't, you know, we'd be exposed to so much because I planned this trip. It took me about six months to actually get the logistics down, plan this trip from start to finish, um, study it. And since I haven't been there in 20 years, you know, um, everything's been, everything's changed. So um, we'd be exposed to a lot of travel and public trans transportation, um, you know, taxis, public spaces, hotels, bathrooms, those kind of places. And in a very tight population kind of urban setting, it's, it's just kind of a recipe for sickness and concentration of illness if it is spreading. So my idea was to actually just forgo the Japan part, we'll eat that, and we'll just stay in the Philippines. Uh, my wife, she's actually half Filipina, half Spanish. She grew up in the Philippines um, near Makati. And, you know, I'm familiar with the Philippines as well because I've traveled there um, before in 2016. Had a wonderful trip there for a month, island hopping, really getting to know the culture. I grew up with uh, Filipino Americans my entire life um, in California. So I feel very close to that culture and in traveling the Philippines, I have to say the Philippines is probably like the best place I've been to, my happy place you could say, uh, just island hopping there. So I just find it quite strange that the universe is throwing me a huge curveball and saying, you know, I, I kind of wanted to make this this pilgrimage to Japan after 20 years of kind of like um, not being able to just go back uh, to the motherland. And um, it's unfortunate. Um, that I haven't been able to go back. My brothers haven't been able to go back. My mom has been able to go back, but not very often, maybe like three times in 20 years, in the last three, four times in the last 20 years. Um, it's just, you know, there's so many excuses, but um, I just find it odd that the universe is now saying, maybe just go to the Philippines, you know, instead for a two week island hopping holiday again, you know, as opposed to doing this pilgrimage to Japan to kind of also retrace the steps that my father made when he visited Japan because he never could come um, with us on our family vacations because he had to still work. So um, previous to marrying my mom, he actually got to experience and go travel Japan and do this cool thing, uh, do a cool trip to Japan, which is, you know, a remarkable thing uh, considering his background and where he came from at the time and all that. Um, for, for him to go travel to Kyoto, Osaka and, um, you know, Tokyo, Fukuoka, it's just incredible and I haven't really gotten to do that um, as an adult really and um, I wanted to you know I see these old photographs of him and my mom in the 80s just doing these cool epic trips and they just look so happy and young and beautiful um, I thought it'd be like a great time for me you know to kind of do that with my own family and my beautiful wife and you know, she's never been to Japan and she's always wanted to see the culture and that heritage, that side of um, my my um, background. Um, so the airline is making us pay extra, basically, if we want to just stay in Manila. And we're kind of like, really? Come on, guys, we're forgoing the Japan part. You can sell those tickets to somebody else. We'll just stay in Manila and we just like a ride back to Australia. From Manila as well. We'll forgo the Japan parts, sell it to other people. We're happy with that. You know, it's given. It's a. It's a world. It's a worldwide epidemic, but it's an epidemic in this side, on this side of the world primarily. And um, just given the situation, we were hoping they could just waive any kind of fees, like a lot of other airlines are doing. But they said, no, nope, no, nope, you're gonna have to pay over a thousand dollars just to stay in Manila where your connecting flight is. So. You know, I'm not a wealthy person. We're basically kind of like a family that's just kind of on like one full-time income. I'm on a casual DJ income on top of that. And then my wife works from home as well, uh, doing her own business, which um, she's started up. And it's not easy. Um, and she looks after both of our kids while I work full-time and then do DJing on top of that. So we save, like, you know, we work really hard to save our money. We don't have a lot of extra money. We've been able to save up for this Japan trip and Japan's not an expense. Uh, Japan is a very expensive country to travel to, especially as compared to Southeast Asia. Uh, Australia is a very expensive place to live. We live in Melbourne, um, and I'm not trying to get into credit cards and all that again. You know, like like I was in college. So we're just in this situation where we're trying to get some help somehow through through you know budget air. I booked with them online kayak somebody help us out you know Philippine Airlines step up we're frequent flyers technically now 
you know, um, from our last trip, we used you guys so many times flying for a month. Just waive the fees and just, you know, let us stay in Manila and or let us stay in the Philippines and fly out of Manila, fly in and out. And we'll forgo the Japan part, you know, and it's just tragic that we have to because, um, yeah, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, sorry, guys, I know this isn't like a typical vlog that I've been doing on this channel, but um, it's just something that we kind of had to get out there because, you know, on top of, you know, our can our trip being canceled um, to Japan. Uh, my father-in-law, Fernando, is still stuck on that ship. So please, if again, if anybody has any kind of political clout, get him off the ship before it's too late. I mean, I feel, we kind of almost feel like it's at this point being a controlled experiment, like from a science standpoint, you know, like these people isolated on the ship, let's see how fast it spreads, what happens to these people of different backgrounds, what happens if, you know, they breathe the same air. How is this? It's kind of like silly now, you know, like we kind of see through the whole like, oh, we're just trying to play it safe thing. Like, no, there's just no transparency. There's no freaking, um, you know, solution to this that they're offering. So we need to do something and help get him off the ship. So please, if anybody has any kind of clout or can get this to anybody who has some kind of um, power, please do so. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to update you guys, and I hope it's happy news on both things, the trip and Fernando getting off the ship. Thanks.